please go and read Dawit's story on the English Pen website. There is a Twitter hashtag for Dawit, which is free Dawit. Um, if everybody in this room today would just go away and, and tweet for Dawit, that would really, really make me very happy today. So thank you. And this piece is called Empathy. From the Greek, Empathia. From the Greek, Empathos. In feeling, in. I'm trying to step in. Not much, you say. Not angry or representative. Not of any real use, perhaps. But still. Two years old, wheezing, seasick in isolation room. Porthole window in antiseptic white door. Three, a stranger in my unconsoling father's house. Eight, a bathroom door, rusted metal lazy in a lock just high enough to reach. Somewhere else, a 23-year-old man has all the doors unlocked, an arrival from a furnace to Sweden's western coast chill. Sadness, but with a heart held already known future. Marry, raise children, write words, perhaps. Not here, but in that first fistful of love. It is the name with the poetry and the fantasy, Eritrea. Eighteen, the girl along the corridor is in love with the university halls. They remind me, she tells me, of her boarding school. In the night, I forget where I am, pack my belongings into the back of the car. Wallace spirals on the back seat, shivering, going home. The young man, too, is home, in the place with the fantasy name he makes already known futures real, swims on the exhilaration of promises, independence, democracy, free speech. He is full of hope. He has called his first-born daughter Bethlehem. 22. Dissertation, keywords, post-colonial politics, space. Diversion in the project to Reuben Hurricane Carter, African-American boxer falsely imprisoned for 20 years on charges of murder. Carter refuses to be free from his cell. He wakes only when the other prisoners are asleep, exercises only at night. My style needs correction. My ideas are too political. They award me the pieces. The young man, too, is fulfilled, perhaps. He has a little money, buys pages of his own, loves cheese and coffee. He has a tendency to oversleep. They come for him on a Sunday, not in the newspaper offices, but in his home. 26. I investigate escape ladders, plan nighttime routes along flat roofs, debate the relative merits of ropes fashioned from sheets and mattresses thrown from windows, decline invitations to travel by plane, decline anything where the aisle is unavailable, accept employment where I can leave the room, speak too fast, always in case the door is about to close. In Eritrea, two days past the prison, the last 3,000, the young man, he is still young, smiles, perhaps. He stretches and remembers how Lynn has moved, visits the doctor and watches bruises transfigure purple to yellow, kisses his children with plum soft lips, inhales <coughs> just long enough for the heartbeat to return to normal, before the handcuffs are re-secured. His wife tells the newspapers that this is a family matter. 32. My pregnant body is inside out. I am waiting nine months to be delivered. In the MRI scanner, I forget not to open my eyes, and for a second, an unalloyed heartbeat, I'm buried alive. On his 47th birthday, the man is given the gift of the rumor of his death. It is a premature arrival. Perhaps. 37. My new lover sleeps like Gulliver. I crouch downstairs in a small sliver of light, invocating chamomile conjured disappearing spells. I say I know the meaning of imprisonment. And yet Hume broke his own rule of sentence deadly to the muzzle of the missile of cold steel. In Gothenburg, a replica cell is created. Visitors come. They sit with the absent man respectfully. They are respectful. With the surety of resurrection, it is impossible to experience death. 
38. I am with love. John gives us the house with the sheep for the music festival. We perform our separation from the world, wallow in isolation, revel in the stripping of time, bemoan lack of phone signal while surfing Facebook from the stairway. It is so good, someone declared, to get away from everything. The man is perhaps no longer young. He has been in his cell for more than 6,000 days. Or if you prefer, 518,400,000 seconds. Or if you prefer, the time it takes for a man's children to reach adulthood. What is your preference? In a house surrounded by sheep, the children gloucester us to the first landing, to a small metal hook in the wooden floor. Incessant clamor demands we lift the lid, show us the priest's hole they squeal. We try to give them a lesson, mutter vaguely about papists, queens, and dying for one's beliefs. They roll their eyes, reach for the light switch, clamber down the ladder, squeezing into the hole. My own daughter refuses, declines, coaxing, peers silently over the edge. A den of detritus, midnight feast littering the floor. The walls are covered in markings, initials carved, the audacity of marker pens. You can write here what you like. If John catches you, then he will charge you more to remove the offending mark. Your parents will pay if you get caught. Concert day and the house is full. An old English man, white haired and pale faced, climbs the stairs. He sees the children curling into the floor, disappearing. He has never been to the house, he tells us, not before today. It is a fine building and he wishes he had come earlier. But he has heard all about the priest's hole, he says, and glances at my daughter. He wouldn't go down there, you're right, she says. You're right to stay up here. Sometimes people do things you can't even imagine, he says. There is a cruelty in people you don't expect. His grandson came here once, some years past, with a group of friends. When he climbed into the hole, he tells us, the other boys shut the lid and stood on it. Wait on the wood. What is the opposite of empathy? I try not to imagine it. I must imagine it. I try to imagine it. And it is then that I hear the call, quiet but clear, the door opening, the ladder climbed, the face this face, both old and young, looking outward, emerging amidst adulthood.